Well, good evening and welcome to the first of our Lent Bible readings and prayers this Ash Wednesday. I'm Neil Robbie, the Vicar of Holy Trinity Church, West Bromwich, and this is going to be a recorded version of what we've just done in church and on Zoom. So I hope you find this helpful. I'm going to screen share and you can follow the service on the screen uh, where there are readings and prayers. So this is the call for all people to put God first. And uh, so it starts a series of readings and prayers from Zechariah. We begin with the collect for Ash Wednesday. Let's pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Make in us new and contrite hearts so that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let me introduce to you the prophecy from Zechariah. Zechariah was a prophet at the time of King Darius of Persia. He spoke God's word as the people of God prepared to return to Jerusalem after 70 years of exile and isolation in Babylon. Zechariah remembered how God had been angered by his people because they had ignored him and lost interest in his ways. God had sent them into exile in Babylon because of their selfish greed. This prophecy tells how God will change the hearts of people from all nations, so they will put him first. Let me pray, and then we'll read Zechariah 1, 1 to 6. Lord, there are striking parallels between the exile of Israel to Babylon and the exile of your people in this generation. They're isolated in our homes, cut off from one another. And so we pray that as we hear your word spoken through your prophet Zechariah, that the, the word then, as relevant as it was, would be relevant to us today. Let us have ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your word. Amen. Zechariah 1, 1 to 6. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, the son of Edo. The Lord was very angry with your ancestors. Therefore, tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Return to me declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Do not be like your ancestors, to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. But they would not listen or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Where are your ancestors now? And the prophets, do they live forever? But did not my words and my decrees, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, overtake your ancestors? Then they repented and said, the Lord Almighty has done to us what our ways and practices deserve just as he determined to do. And some prayer points for us. We can acknowledge that the Lord put his people into exile because they had ignored him and his ways. We can ask the Lord to restore knowledge of Christ and his ways in this generation. We can thank the Lord that all his promises are sure and he can be trusted. 
and we can ask the Lord to help us put Jesus first in our lives as we come out of lockdown. I suggest that you pause your video here and pray through those points. Well, we read in verse 6 that the people repented and turned back to the Lord, acknowledging that God had done to them what they deserved because their ways had been evil. And it's a great call and command to us from the Lord to turn back to God. This is a, a service now of commination, which was a, a service introduced in the prayer book. And it's a confession. And, and I want to just say that um, it's, a, it's quite a, a direct challenge to us. But, but like the song um, Pas by Passenger, uh, let her go. In that song, there's great contrasts. Uh, we never miss the sun until it starts to snow. Don't miss home until beyond the road. You never know you love her till you let her go. And in here, we, we can't truly delight in the death of Jesus Christ for sin unless we first unless we first have a great dread of sin in our own lives. And that dread of sin can only come by knowing that God is displeased with us and curses us when we refuse to walk in his ways. So first we need to, to dread our sin and the curse of sin before we can delight in Christ on the cross. And so here we are, the combination, brothers and sisters, in his word, the Lord our God has made known to us himself and his ways to the end that we may find out what pleases or displeases the Lord and walk in the light of truth. At a time when we are suffering most grievously from the death, from death and disease in our nation and from disorder and division in our church. It is right that we should submit ourselves to the judgment of God's holy word with the intent that being warned of the great indignation of God against sin, we may be moved to true and earnest repentance and may walk more warily in, those, in these dangerous days, fleeing from such vices as we affirm with our own mouths are cursed by God. Hear then what the Holy Spirit says. You can join with me by saying the amens in bold. Cursed is anyone who makes an idol, a thing detestable to the Lord. Amen. Cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or mother. Amen. Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner the fatherless, or the widow. Amen. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. Amen. Let me read that again. The end of that sentence was covered. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them will receive many curses. Amen. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Amen. If anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be cursed. Amen. Cursed are those who preach a false gospel. Amen. Curses anyone who leads the blind astray. Amen. 
Cursed is anyone who does not uphold the words of God's law by carrying them out. Amen. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Lord, have mercy upon us. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral nor, adulter nor adulterers, sorry, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Christ, have mercy upon us. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Lord, have mercy upon us. But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality of any kind or, or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as a, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Christ, have mercy upon us. Now, seeing that all those who go astray from the commandments of God are accursed and cut off from his kingdom, let us remember the dreadful judgment hanging over our heads and return to the Lord our God with all contrition and meekness of heart, bewailing and lamenting our sinful lives, acknowledging and confessing our offenses and seeking to bring forth the fruits of repentance and faith. And so we pray together. O oh, most mighty God and merciful Father, who has compassion upon all and hates nothing that he has made, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we should rather turn from our sin and be saved. Mercifully forgive us all our sins, revive and comfort us who are grieved and wearied with the burden of them. Spare us, good Lord, spare your people whom you have redeemed. Enter not into judgment with your servants who are but dust and pitiable sinners. But so turn your anger from us who meekly acknowledge our wickedness and truly repent of our faults. And so make haste to help us in this world that we may ever live with you in the world to come where there will no longer be any curse. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us by being hung on a tree. 
And so we pray, O Lord, that you would mercifully hear our prayers and spare all who confess their faults, that those who, whose consciences are sin... I'll start again, I'm so sorry. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us by being hung on a tree. And so we pray, O Lord, that you will mercifully hear our prayers and spare all those who confess their faults, that those whose consciences are by sin accursed may by your merciful pardon be absolved, cleansed, and set free through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we receive God's blessing, I have a song which allows us to respond uh, in, that, in that attitude of repentance, uh, to, to put God first. And that song is, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. And now the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord lift up the light of his face upon us and give us peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>